so our, our initial challenge was the fishbowl. And um, what we experienced was that we'd all had very different fishbowl experiences mm -hmm. and the way the fishbowl worked. Um, uh, in addition, one of them was like so close to a Samoan circle, it probably is a Samoan circle. So, um, the, uh, so what we did was we first said what was fundamental uh, to all of them, applied to all. Um, obviously, they're about circles. In fact, it's two circles. There is the circle that is um, on the outside that's looking in. It's, it's almost always 100% around, which is why it's called a fishbowl. Um, and the circle in the center is also a circle, you know, typically with a conversational number of people. You know, I've done it with five, seven, four, whatever. Um, clearly, it is about inquiry. There's always a, you know, a, uh, the, you know one of the fundamental things of, that, that convenes this is there's an inquiry about something um, in all of the different cases. Um, and, and that that is, uh, you know, probably one of the most important elements if you're facilitating it is the nature of you know, what is the questions that you're asking and whatever. Um, clearly it is a subgroup, whole group um, activity where you have a problem when you've got a large number of people. Uh, I did a fishbowl that I think had 70 or 90 people on the outside, like five experts on the, on the inside. Um, and there was just no way we could have had a one-on-one -on -one interaction with those people. Um, so the, the roles here is um, there is a, uh, you know, clearly in the center here kind of blossoming out is informing the group mind. The idea is that the subpart is, is part of the whole, and I think in all of these, and we're trying to inform the group mind of the whole. Um, there is absolutely from the outside a listening um, that, that's here. And then there's kind of a, a facilitative assumption, a... a uh, uh, a participant assumption uh, in mirroring here that, okay, if they can resolve it in the center or if they can get the information in the center, whatever it is in the center, that it will resolve it for the people on the outside, you know, the outside will resolve to the center, okay? So that's what all of these had, and so we called them generically, not that they're called this in any other place that I know of, concentric circle processes, because it seemed like it was multiple circles. And I could, you know, theoretically imagine a, a you know, a third circle out here um, of people, you know, witnessing and such. Now we get yeah. to the specific formats. So um, you had experience with an issue-based, uh, what we what we're calling an issue-based fishbowl, where the facilitators brought in uh, people that had a specific problem in the group and the different sides of that problem, um, and. Um, uh, they basically would have that discussion facilitated by the by the uh, um, uh, facilitators, and with the, the hopeful result that at the end of it, if that the this would inform the group mind and be resolved for everybody. Okay, uh, is that an accurate representation? Um, there is the participatory Samoan circle, um, which also um, often is about you know, something that has some emotional content or whatever. But the big difference is that um, there's a lot more in out. Um, there are a couple of different methods by which, you know, you can stand behind somebody's chair or somebody can leave a chair absent and then they go off and um, um, stuff. So there's more in and out that happens. So, uh, you know, everybody, po I mean, my ideal of Samoan Circle is that at one point almost everybody's had a chance to be in the center. Mm -hmm. um, the... Um, uh, there's the, um, the expert one, which uh, you have the experts in the center, a lot of people on the outside. Um, typically, we converse for like 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and then popcorn of questions from the outside, which the facilitator will massage and process and ask us, so, and then we will continue. So there is a little bit of feedback, but it's not that explicit. And then there was a role space Samoan circle where, you know, you know, one person, you know, had a hammer and he was, if you sat in that chair, the chair had a hammer on it, you were, you know, the, the expert, uh, the voice of the experts, the voice of authority. Um, uh, another chair had, uh, you know, a ruler and a compass and, you know, you're the, the speakers to design. If you want to sit in this chair, you know, your job is to speak to the design of the process or whatever. And then there was another chair that had a rag doll with no face. 
and you're the, supposed to, if you sat in that chair, you're supposed to represent the people who aren't here, the voices mm -hmm. of the voiceless, the voices of you know, those not represented here. So given that, um, these four cards kind of came out. So um, in the divergence-convergence rhythm, um, there really wasn't a lot of divergence-convergence in the, the issue-based uh, fishbowl. Um, absolutely part of the, the, the uh, Samoan circle because of the in and out of the participants. You could maybe argue, a pretty sketchy, um, that the experts, there's some divergence and convergence. It's simply because the questions do popcorn in. Um, uh, but, you know, there isn't, you know, the experts don't question the people in the circle, in the outer circle. So I, that's why I said some. In roles, I think there is uh, also a divergence-convergence rhythm that, that is happening. Um, in the discharging, which has to do with um, you know, anger, frustration, hurt, fear, et cetera, all of them had discharging elements except for the experts one. Um, the experts one was you know, pretty uh, um, just informing about information. I mean, there were a couple things like, gosh, you know, we might need to worry about that. But it, it was very, very rational, very uh, uh, left brain. Um, but the rest of them, I, I use fishbowl in my classes. I mean, not fishbowl. I use Samoan circle in my classes for one particular contentious issue, which is um, why are you scared to be online? Um, and that's, I find, the best way to, to pull, pull down out of the group. Experts on tap, um, clearly it has some applicability to the issue one, because you better have people in the center that um, you know, can speak to both sides of the issue, or you're not going to get it resolved. Um, but it's only somewhat. Uh, Samoan Circle, it doesn't matter. Um, I mean, the experts in the, you know, everybody's in the room as an expert. Um, absolutely important for experts. Uh, for the roles one, again, no. Um, and then finally, for the roles-based one, clearly there's a role of the people in the center in the issue uh, in the sense that, you know, they're, you know, kind of the representatives of the, of the issue and the problem, um, you know, pro and con. Uh, but I consider that lesser. Samoan, no. Um, excuse me. Uh, the got my order, the expert one, some, but it's essential to the, the right. you know, the, the roles aspect of this card is essential to the Samoan circle with the, with with the hammers and, the, and the, the rag doll and such. So, um, uh, sweet. Any questions or you, you understand our problem? Or is there yet another fishbowl type that... that <laughs> oh, same question I'm going to ask to, you, to every presenter. <laughs> so when would you see this being ideally used and never used? Um, it's, I, okay, so two different things. It's ideally, almost all of these it's, um, is when you've got more people than who you need. I mean, it's like you it's need big, to, big it's, a, it's a bigger group than what you can facilitate in some fashion. Okay. Um, in, as a subset of that, it's particularly good when there's um, emotions that can get out of control um, because it's much easier to control the emotions of the small group of people and uh, um, give them ways to discharge that, express <clears> that, <throat> and whatever that ends up everybody because they're witnesses. <coughs> um, uh, I had played around, I, I thought maybe there's witness with compassion um, that was in Universal, but I just didn't feel like that was the, it fit the, um, it fit the expert version of this. Okay. Um, Time-wise, you need about an hour. When would you never use it? That was the other part of the question. When would you not use this? Um, if you don't have a, um, a large group of people. I know Tricia was trying to get in. Oh, no, um, again, I wouldn't use it if everyone knows, if everyone in the room is well informed on a topic. Mm -hmm. Normally I use it where there might be a subset of the, in the larger group that have an issue, and it's about the, the whole group being, you know, um, witnessing what's going on for that group. So if everyone is informed, I tend not to use it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Two more questions. Actually, it was the same. Yeah. Okay. But okay. there's a difference okay. between a small group of people that know more about you. Okay. Oh, actually, this can also be used as experiential learning if you wanted to mm -hmm. demonstrate a method or some mm -hmm. some sort of facilitative process mm -hmm. to a group of people. Then the people in the middle would be the ones doing the demonstration. It becomes experiential learning for those outside. 
the ones outside then can ask questions. Right? That's so that's kind of the bearing of the expert. Yeah. Or is it in yeah. the floor? I don't know. Any final comments on the map itself and how well, we're sort of getting more into the nature of the method, which is fine because this can be, shows how it can be a teaching tool. Anything else about how well the map helps you understand it or well, I've never comments there. that way? I've never seen, uh, it's the first map where I've seen sort of uh, variants of a method within one yeah. map yeah. and then this yeah. like yeah. idea yeah. of having subsets with yeah. checklists and so on. Yeah. So that's yeah. a really interesting mm -hmm. twist on it. Yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. all interrelated. Yeah. And yeah. I think the subset part was, is very interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the way that because it's uh, physically the way you do it is, you know, you sit in the, the circle, so then drawing that on here and having cards replicate that by their physical locations, repli replicating what human bodies do in the method, mm -hmm. yeah. concentric circles. Mm -hmm. That's a really yeah. interesting thing when physical reality, you know, the map is not the territory, but we might represent yeah. different aspects of the territory mm -hmm. on the map. Maybe a slight reiteration, but that I think it's cool having this map where it's a, it's a neat way to map similar methods, so things that are close yeah. enough right. and to show like here's the key divergences. Right, right, right. Okay, we're gonna move on. How about?